Today's modifier will be the cast modifier, and for that I have inserted a icosphere with a subdivision of 4 and a normal icosphere. Of course, it doesn't matter that they're spheres, just uh, it's easiest to demonstrate. So I'll add a deform cast modifier, and I'm going to go through the settings. First of all, we need a control object, which is going to be my icosphere 1 here. And you can see that the distance of the icosphere doesn't make too much of a difference because it's sort of an infinite sphere that's projected around this and squishing my cast object. So um, I don't think you will use the cast modifier just as such. So let's tweak a few of the values. The factor is the blending... Well, let's not start with the factor. Let's make this cast modifier. Uh, work actually. If the radius is zero, then um, the radius will sort of be infinite. It will only change if the object is going through the border of the original vertex position. So when, once it passes the border of the original object, the non-deformed object, then the position will make a huge difference. Other than that, it will make a very small difference. So you probably won't use this uh, settings very much, so I'm going to increase the radius. So first of all it disappears, which is weird, but this is because 0 means infinite and 0 0.05 means very very small. So I'm just going to keep increasing this, put the sphere a little closer, and you can see now this is working a lot better. Okay, now my object has a radius of 0 0.7 blender units and will deform cast objects only if it's closer to a vertex than this defined radius. If I uncheck from radius, which is something I would not recommend, then the size will be calculated from this slider here, which usually produces very weird results, so I'm not going to uh, check this, just uh, if you use from radius, that means the size is calculated from this radius and makes the results a lot smoother. So just leave this checked and you're fine. And then we have the factor. The factor uh, can be used to sort of uh, exaggerate the effect. And I usually leave this at 0.5. It's linear. So if you have 0.5, then your vertices are uh, the uh, the position of the original vertex is 0.5 the position of uh, the distance of the newly calculated position of the vertex. If that doesn't make sense to you, then just leave the factor on 0.5 or slide it around and see what happens. This is actually a fun thing as well. You can invert the effect. Okay, let's leave it at 0.5. So, um, then there's a vertex group. Of course, you can limit it to the vertex groups, just like most of the modifiers. You can limit the cast to certain axes. For example, like this, it will only affect the uh, Z axis, Z axis, depending what you prefer. And um, yeah, those are pretty much self-explanatory. And then you can change the uh, shape of your cast object. This is now set to be a sphere. You can also put it to cuboid, which kind of looks weird, but it's, uh, I guess there could be some fun things you can do with that. The cuboid displacement and, of course, the tube or cylinder displacement. <coughs> this will um, sort of try to stencil your, or to put your original mesh into the form of a tube. I'm not sure if the tube is dependent on the rotation. No, it's not. So, I guess if you want to change the um, direction of the cylinder, you have to rotate your object. And um, there is one... Uh, there's two settings where I actually used the cast modifier. And one was I had a big white blood cell eating a smaller thing. So what you can see is happening. It um, Let's decrease the radius just a bit, something like that. If I go very close, you can see that the um, bigger sphere sort of forms a mouth around the smaller sphere and sort of swallows it. Of course, we need 
more geometry to do so, so I'm going to add a subsurf modifier on top and below. But unfortunately this produced very unsmooth results and the critical moment where the sphere was sort of eaten, it snapped. It snapped around and it had one vertex that is projected behind my sphere and the rest of the vertices are still projected in front of it. So if you make this fairly fast, this might work because over here it looks good, this looks good, this doesn't, and here it looks good again. So maybe if you skip this step, sort of, hop, there you go, that might work. And one other solution, one other um, thing, I did see this on the web, but I have no idea where anymore. So what I'm going to do is add a cube and um, parent the cube to this object and then I'm going to go to the object settings and click verts and that means that this original object the vertices of this original object will now determine the position of all those cubes I'm going to scale this down so you can see the individual cubes and you can see this is uh, looking kind of funny already and uh, if you now use this and uh, increase the radius then you can see I can slide around in here and make my cubes offset so um, and there it does not matter that well it does matter a little bit but it's not that bad that your cubes get displaced because for example if you can uh, make them glow or something then you'll have a very abstract and funny animation and um, one more option with the dupliverts you can check rotation where is it there that will make your cubes follow the rotation of the vertices as well so yeah this is I guess one of the most um, common uh, things you would use the cast modifier in an actual animation other than that maybe if you don't get too close and you want some influence or if you know you stay inside and you have a lava crawling a larvae crawling around underneath somebody's skin something like that be creative this is the cast modifier for you I hope you learned something and in the next day we're going to have a look at the curve modifier Modifier.